Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be looking at human resource management strategies, uh, but specifically focusing on rewards management and global strategies. So let's start with rewards management. Now, a well-planned reward system is a key strategy in attracting, motivating, and retaining employees. A reward system can reinforce strategies to facilitate change or support desirable corporate values, such as uh, a focus on the customer. Now, it includes monetary and non-monetary rewards. Uh, monetary rewards are those uh, reflected in pay or having a financial value, whereas non-monetary rewards are those that do not have a financial value, such as social activities or retirement planning. And even within this, monetary, non-monetary, we've also got two more elements where they can both be intrinsic, which um, are, are rewards that the individual gets inside themselves from satisfaction of the job itself, sense of achievement. Or they can be extrinsic, which is rewards that are given or provided outside the job. Um, and these as well can be monetary, for example, incentive payments, or non-monetary, um, for example, flexible work schedules. So intrinsic rewards can really just be, you're happy that you've got the job. It's done properly to a good standard, or it could be money or non-money rewards. Um, so within rewards management, We've also got individual or group awards. Now, rewards are often related to individual performance. However, this can lead to conflict and rivalry if not managed effectively. All individuals are dependent on others and on efficient workplace systems to achieve high quality performance. Now, increasing use of group and team-based structures have therefore then increased the need for cooperation and made it really hard to distinguish performance of individuals within that team. You know, who's actually done what for the team? Um, so key issues to consider in designing a reward and benefit system in terms of uh, the business include uh, the business's strategy, the rewards and benefits of the competitors, uh, the profitability and viability of the business. Uh, key issues to consider in designing a reward and benefit system for individual employees uh, include uh, the performance related, so uh, incentive plans for performance above standards or criteria, you know, bonuses, commissions, production related incentives, uh, job related um, benefits, so ro the, the role and level of responsibility, you know, maybe tinkering with their scope of supervision, their base pay, um, and then uh, there are some other individual considerations, you know, so, um, you know, the employee's values, the, the job conditions they're in. So, and again, that, that, this, these lists are not exhaustive. That's just a snapshot. Uh, moving on to global strategies. Now, globalization of business, as well as technological developments in the internet, uh, human resource applications, telecommunications, this has significantly increased the competition faced by any business. Now, there are strong factors, including the high cost of skilled labor in Australia and a shortage in the supply of that skilled labor uh, that are pushing businesses to operate globally. Uh, now, offshore skilled labor is available, but is not always available as required in the desired locations or quantities uh, due to high levels of demand for lower cost labor in regions of, you know, lower, uh, lower wage nations. Initially, businesses typically expand through indirect exporting and demand via the internet for their products. Then, as they gain experience, they expand by exporting and sourcing products, services, and processes through the global web. Later, when experience is gained and some success is felt, expansion occurs through licensing and sales offices, relocation of production and acquisition or joint ventures. A business planning to expand overseas needs to consider whether it wishes to use a polycentric, ethnocentric or geocentric staffing approach. A polycentric staffing approach uses host country staffing with parent country staff in corporate management at its headquarters. Although this helps the company access good market knowledge, is often cost efficient and satisfies local pressure for employment opportunities, it may limit, uh, it may limit management experience for host country staff. A geocentric staffing approach uses the staff with the most appropriate skill set for a particular role and location and builds a pool of managers with global experience. This can be a complex and expensive policy, however, due to local employment regulations, relocation, and retraining costs. 
And finally, an ethnocentric approach uses parent country staff in its business. This may limit its ability to interact with customers and learn from overseas markets. So essentially, there's a shift here and a bit of a spectrum where we go from polycentric where you're using the staff in the host country. So let's, for example, we're going from Australia to uh, to um, India. Uh, they'll use the staff from India, but the corporate management will be from Australia. We then move to geocentric, which then looks at, well, what is, you know, who's the best suited for this job? And then ethnocentric, which is uses all people from parent country. So all Australians in the, uh, let's say, the Indian factory, if that's where they are. So I hope this brief video on rewards management and global strategies has been useful. The next video will look at workplace disputes. Thank you.